Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News pregame show as I'm joined by John from Off the Wall Hockey. We preview the Flyers and Bruins series this e- that starts this evening and also has a game on Saturday. So let's get right to it. Uh, John, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me on. Really, really appreciate it. And we have a great couple of hockey games coming up here between these two teams. Yeah, we do. We do. And we have unfortunate news for both teams, obviously having key players out. You guys have Pasta, who's still out. And the Flyers have Sean Couturier, who ended up being out for at least two weeks. But people that have commented saying that they've had that similar injury have said that that has a tendency to uh, linger, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting what happens there. Frost is out with a shoulder for the Flyers for the longevity uh, They said they're going to try to get back to us on him. That's an undetermined timeline right now. And then Myers uh, is a a week-to-week candidate right now. So the injuries are definitely going to affect these uh, two teams. But I'll go to you first on this. What have you seen as the main difference um, from your team, and who do you think is going to have to step up against the Flyers in, in place of David Pasternak not being in? Yeah, without Pasternak in, scoring has been a huge, huge issue for the Bruins. Um, it's, their offense has been downright terrible to start this season. They still don't have a five-on-five goal three games in, and uh, they're the only team in the league that hasn't scored five-on-five other than the Dallas Stars, who haven't played a game yet. So um, it, it's not been a good start for Boston. They need more out of Jake DeBrusque. Um He's supposed to be one of the big guns as far as secondary scoring goes outside of that top line of Marshan, Bergeron, and Pasta. Um, DeBrusque is supposed to be kind of the catalyst along with David Krejci and Craig Smith coming in for that secondary scoring unit. And DeBrusque has zero points so far this season. So uh, he's been massively disappointing. Um, I was expecting a big year out of him after a not-so-good season last year. And so far, he has not been any better than he was last season. So um, DeBrusque has got to show something here for Boston. And he's a guy that I look to that really needs to get himself on the score sheet over these next couple of games. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. He was a player that I've always uh, liked since he came up. It was nice, obviously, seeing... uh... I believe it was Louie when you see the highlight they always show of him crying uh, mm-hmm. that uh, in the stands where he's never cried in his life pretty much. And then you see a video of the dude just bawling his eyes out after uh, Jake scored. That was kind of a very funny uh, TV moment, I think, mm-hmm. because you just never saw him as a player when you watch highlights of him. He was that brute guy. You never see him crying. But uh, yeah, that was uh, you're right. He dipped last year. He was in the 40s, went in the 30s. You definitely need to look for a big response from him. But uh, three games in, maybe uh, he'll get going. Uh, I think the big thing this year that I've been saying in most of the videos is without a preseason, yeah, some guys just naturally, for some reason, always get off the hot starts. Where other yeah. guys need that camp, that regular, normal, what they're used to camp plus a preseason, and that's what gets them in the yeah. group. Maybe Jake's one of those guys in about four or five games so in after you would have about which like six is the preseason schedule the yep. preseason schedule then you would uh start to see him really ramping it up there but another question i had for you before i gave my take on the flyers was what have you thought of the bruins defense since losing sedano Chara in the offseason and uh, obviously tory krug uh what have you thought of guys like lazan guys like Grizzlick having to play a bigger role and then Zaboro now coming in and yep. Miller being an everyday guy rather than last year he was somewhat in and out at time. Yeah, I mean, the defense has been a pleasant surprise for the Bruins. There was a lot of questions about this decor, particularly with how young and ex- inexperienced they are. Losing Chara, losing Krug, those were obviously huge losses from veteran players who played a massive role on this team. And there were a lot of questions about the defense. So far, so good defensively. Boston's not giving up a lot of goals. The first game against New Jersey, they only gave up a couple goals, and one of them was very fluky. It bounced in off about three guys. Uh, the, The last game against the Islanders, they only gave up one goal. I mean, I don't know what else they want from their defense and goaltending. 
uh, they, it's been the offense that's held this team back and why they've had such a shaky start. But the young guys have been good. Lausanne, he was a little bit shaky the first couple of games. Um, he had never played a role that big. He's playing up with Charlie McAvoy. He had never played a role that big at the NHL level before. And I think it took him a couple of games to get adjusted to it. But he had a very good game against the Islanders on Monday. Um, Zaboros looked very, very solid. Getting Kevin Miller back in that lineup is huge. He missed basically the past two seasons with major injuries. And he's had multiple knee surgeries and wasn't even sure if he was ever going to play again. And now for him to come in and play as well as he has in his first game action in a long, long time has been very nice to see. So I have no complaints about the defense. The only thing I wish we could get a little bit more offensive production from the back end. These guys aren't really pushing the play and adding the offense like Tory Krug did. But I think that will come with time. And again, they're very young. The main job of the defense is to not allow goals. And so far, the Bruins defense is doing a very good job of not allowing goals. Yeah. Um, I mean, Miller, like you said, uh, two years ago, well, I guess it would have been three years ago now, um, in 17, in the playoffs of the 17 season, he did pretty well for the Bees. And then um, the following season, you guys only had him for the 30-some change games until he got injured. But yep. he's a good veteran guy. He's also – that's a good story when you hear a guy battling through uh, leg injuries and he's able to find his way back at the age of 33, no less, yep. um, and be able to uh, get back in a – lineup so that is a very good story to be able to see for him uh to be able to have a steady position with a young guy being able to kind of tutor the young guy into the league and teach him the ropes of the nhl yeah for him yeah absolutely it's been a great story all through the pre or not pre training camp and uh the beginning of the season for the bruins for sure it's great to have miller back yeah, and then for our team, I think what I saw so far early, obviously we saw a big effect from losing Sean Couturier game one because we mm -hmm. got shellocked by the Buffalo Sabres of all teams. <laughs> that was a uh, weird game. Six, Yeah, six to one. So that really showed, and I don't think I agree with um, – your reef and others on the pocket. You can't use Couturier as an excuse for getting murdered six to one for losing. Sure. But for getting destroyed like that by Buffalo, who doesn't have the most consistent all around. Yes. They have a very skilled fast lineup in the upper tier of their lineup, yeah. but they don't have the most consistent defensive defense. And you just weren't able to generate any offense against them. You made Linus Olmark, uh, or Carter Harden, excuse me, look like a million bucks. Uh, like, um, that's, uh, you made him look like his blues days before he had any <laughs> issues with his eyes, basically like that's, uh, that's what he looked like out there. But that's yeah. what I saw. You saw the effect of the losing of Couturier. Then they really adjusted in game two. And what I saw from the Flyers was they played a much more aggressive. You saw Limblum. You saw guys like um, Jake. You saw guys like JVR get in on the four check and kind of pound guys more than even they usually do. Both All those guys usually do that, but they did it to an oomph degree because it seemed like for not having coots out, they said, we got to go harder. Basically, like how in basketball is, they got to go harder in the paint. Yep. You, know, you got to go harder on the four check. Like they even did that really up the greed, their boards play and really keeping the guys to the outside. They got a lot of shots, obviously, because Moose had to make a 40 save shutout. But mm -hmm. they tried to limit the top notch chances. And early on is when there was a lot of top notch chances that Moose really had to come up big. Then as time went on, the defense really settled, and I think the Flyers played probably their best defensive game as time went on against Buffalo, adjusting from losing Couturier. And the one thing is, losing Frost is a huge loss because of his offensive skill. Mm -hmm. Against defense, though, Morgan's still learning that side. Bonneman is a defensive player. He's yep. more of a guy that's a penalty killer, a 200-foot guy that just chips in. Kind of like a young, Raffle-esque guy that's more of a center, though, than a winger. Yep. Uh, where he's going to chip in on offense and probably won't have that 120-goal season that Raffle had. But he'll chip in and then also be a very good penalty killer. That's what you see out of Bunny. Bunny, though, offensive-wise, might have the potential, if he plays enough in the future, to have a 10-15 to 15 goal yep. in game two because he has that skill to be able to do that. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm hoping to 
Yeah, I mean, the uh, for Philadelphia, I mean, obviously their injury bug is kind of hitting them a little bit here early. Um, I, I think that that first Buffalo game, that that's an anomaly. I think that's just one of those nights where just it's just from the start, just a bad night. And those are going to happen every once in a while throughout the year. But so far, I think Philadelphia has been one of the more impressive teams um, throughout the to, to start the season this year. And, you know, they're 3-1 and one to start the year. Uh, the injuries here, Couturier is a big loss. I mean, anytime you lose your number one center, that's just, that's a blow to the lineup. And I think Phil Myers on the back end is a bigger loss than more pe- than a lot of people realize because he's not exactly a household name yet in his NHL career. But Phil Myers is a pretty clear top four defenseman. And he's played a big role over the last year, last year and now into this year with this Flyers team and you know they got Friedman coming in for him uh I got to see Friedman a little bit in the AHL um he looks like a solid young D-man who certainly can step into a role but you're never going to just come in and replace what Phil Myers brings to the lineup because Myers is a guy that's really developed into a, a pretty darn good top four guy so it's going to be interesting to see how the Flyers look. I mean, they, they're a very deep team. They've got a lot of depth, both up front and on the back end. And obviously, they're tremendous in goal with Hart and Elliott. So I think the Flyers are a team that can overcome these injuries and are still going to be a very tough team to beat, even with these guys out. But there's no doubt that, you know, especially, you know, losing Couturier up front and losing Myers on the back end, those are pretty significant losses for Philadelphia. Yeah, the Flyers uh, brought back up Derek uh, offseason acquisition depth defenseman Derek Pouillot um, from the going to the Phantoms and training with them to get ready for their season back onto the taxi squad. So yep. uh, he's there now. And then you also have a youngster in Zamula who you might not want to rush, but look decent in camp if all else fails. Yep. Um, I think uh, Friedman's a guy. I'm comfortable with Friedman stepping in. I just kind of said it on the Disciples of Ed. I thought because of how Braun has started to look pretty slow at this point of his career and more of just a sh- literally like a guy, if you have a fast defenseman and he could be the shot blocker on the line that just D's up it, but he would work in that setting. The problem is the Flyers don't have a guy like that to match him up with because you don't want to put – putting him with Pro V, he's too slow. So well, that he he's been that playing with Prover all and, 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 and that hasn't worked that well. That's the, yeah. That's why you would see on one side of the ice some guy he just drifts open at times, and then Provy kind of you I've noticed has to kind of sometimes man both ends because Braun's not as quick as he used to be. Where when he used to play with Vlasic or other guys in uh, San Jose, he could still move a little bit, so he would. It wouldn't be like the one other guy has to run a little rough shot because he's not as quick. Now he's kind of getting to the point of his career where he's just a shot blocker, has to bring a little bit more of a physical presence probably to stick around longer because he's just not ample on his feet anymore. Where I think the only reason Friedman didn't get put in right away is A.V. said he didn't look as impressive in camp this year, Mm -hmm. but has looked really good since and has been like one of the best practice guys basically. So. Um, if he looked really good in camp, I'm one person that doesn't even think Braun would have been in the starting to start. But because of that, I think he had to start. So now we'll see what Friedman's able to do. And if he does really well while he's in, I think this might make for the best lineup for the Flyers going forward. Because then when Ghost comes back, you might even make Braun be the guy that first comes out and see what happens there. And then when um, obviously Myers comes back, you're probably not going to have Braun if he's not playing he might become the veteran, the very good at that point, because he's a good six seven. He's just mm-hmm. not shouldn't be playing him where he's at. A yeah. very extra guy or a six once you have everybody healthy with Myers back and goes. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. But I have confidence in Friedman stepping in. I just am going to be interested to see what they do with the lines because they're saying they might put Gus with Braun. I don't know how well that's going to work. Um, so we got to see. Is just, that could work if Braun just commits to saying, don't come up at all. Just sit here, stay at the blue line, don't move. I don't care if the, unless if you have to come up the boards to hit the puck in the zone again, don't move from the blue line when you're in the offensive zone. 
mm-hmm. like just stay back. So yeah. if Gunn pulls up, you could, that would be when that could work. But then you have to get Braun to completely commit to that, and uh, we'll see if that happens. But it's going to be interesting how they do the pairing, in my mind. But as we uh, wrap this up, though, what are your two lines that you're really looking for and excited to see these two uh, – teams go against with each other are you looking at any particular pairings you're excited to see go up against each other in this series two game series uh i mean i i kind of want to see if for you know the bergeron line obviously the right wing regular right wing david posternock isn't there but you've still got marshawn and bergeron up there and I, I mean, I don't know what the matchup is going to be. I assume they'll probably try and match them up with the Giroux line and shut down Claude Giroux. Um, but I, I just uh, that matchup of like the Flyers' high end offense versus the defensive abilities of guys like Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand. Um, uh, I'm excited to see how that matchup goes and which uh, which team's able to come out on top, the offense or the defense. Yeah, um, for me, uh, I'm excited to see how. Because I was going to say the Patrick Lindblom and Konechny line, but because of how uh, Frost is injured now, that finagled our lines a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see how Patrick, with how well he's coming to this season, is going to do with uh, Van Riemsdyk, who really has started the season well, and then Giroux, who's been the facilitator, but has looked good out there so far this season as well. Uh, How he does with those two, since he's looked so good with Oscar and connect me. That was our best line, honestly, offensive production wise. So I'm excited to see how Nolan does moving up with those two. And I feel like you're still going to see him with connect and Limblum at times too, where AV will kind of flip those two. And you might see Scotty go out with JVR and Giroux at times. And then you see uh Limblum and uh TK and Patrick back together at times too, especially if they need the offense, since that's been the offensive productivity line that's been to the max so far this year. So I could definitely see that happening, but I'm excited to see this goalie matchup too. I mean, hard against a uh, Rask. That's yes. always a good one. One of the best young goalies against one of the best uh, veterans goalies and one of the better goalies of our time uh, yep. and that's a Vezina goaltender um so that's a very exciting trait to see and a very exciting storyline always going into these games as well but as we wrap it up uh what do you think of your predictions coming into this series do you think your Bruins are going to be able to get both or it's going to be a split I, t- I tell you I said this on the podcast last night because of our injuries I think for us it's definitely going to be a split but what's your opinion of uh this series uh, I, I'm thinking it's likely to be a split. Um, uh, it's got to at least be a split. If Boston loses both of these games and drops to one, three, and one to start their year, they're in trouble. They're digging a hole that is going to be difficult to climb out of. So the Bruins have got to win at least one of these two games. And uh, I, I think looking at it, it's probably going to be a split with where both of these t- th- these two teams are at. So I would not be surprised if one wins the first night and then the other team comes out and wins on Saturday. Yeah, that makes sense to me because both of these teams, the Flyers, due to their injuries, are kind of in a figuring out with the lineup process. And then obviously the Bruins with their turnover and Mm -hmm. the fact that David Pasternak, who's one of the best, if not the best five on five player, is not in their lineup. So that's a huge, uh, big issue there for them. But uh, when is the uh, is there updates on when he's supposed to be back? Yet, by the way, or Uh, early February, it was supposed to be mid February, but he's a little bit ahead of schedule. He's been practicing uh, with a non-contact jersey, so he is back on the ice. He is back practicing. He's not ready for contact yet, though. But we're looking at at least another couple weeks. But early February, Pasta should be back in the lineup. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, because that'll obviously be a huge addition for Boston, and then that could be around the same time if he's at the shorter end of the injury. Cooch is also coming back for the Flyers if he's not at the lingering end of the injury. Yep. But I really thank you for joining for this pregame video, John. I really appreciate it. This has been John from Off the Wall Hockey. Please go follow him at his account on Off the Wall Hockey and check out his stuff on SteelFlyer dot com as well as on our Steel Flyer Spreaker. You set up all your stuff over oh, yeah. there as well now, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yes, it's all set, ready to go. Steelflyers.com. We are uh, we are pumping out the content. Yep, and then check out, uh, you can check out my page at Sports Rad News, the Joe Boric page on steelflyers.com as well. And also please subscribe and click the bell for the Sports Rad News YouTube page. We really appreciate it. This has been the Flyers and Bruins pregame video for the Flyers and Bruins two-game series. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the hockey.